Welcome back, ladies. God bless you all. Thank you for joining me. Today we are looking at the situation where you, you have really worked hard. You have really worked hard the whole day. You haven't even rested. You've been cooking. You've been cleaning. But your husband comes home and instead of thanking you, he is complaining. So in this situation, what should you do? Jesus was talking to his disciples one day and he asked them the question, that which one among you, that if you have a servant and your servant has been on the field doing his duty, plowing and um, looking after animals, and then he comes home, are you going to tell your servant to go and sit down and eat? But rather you will tell your servant to go and make food for you, serve you, wait for you to eat your food, and then he can go and eat his own food. And so Jesus was saying, and he was asking them, is the, is the master going to even say thank you? No, he will not say thank you. Why? Because the servant has simply done his duty. And so when we also do our duty, we should just see ourselves as unprofitable servants who have just done our duty. We are not looking for appreciation. So in this situation where your husband came home and he is, he is complaining instead of saying thank you, the first thing that God is saying we should do is don't look for appreciation because you are only doing your duty as a wife. And our duty as wives is homemaking, the cleaning, cooking, and those things. Number two, look for perfection. Husband is complaining because there is something wrong somewhere. No matter how a person is, he will not complain for nothing. Whatever he is complaining means that there is something wrong. No matter how much we have toiled from morning until evening, no matter what we have done, the efforts that we have put in, if there is something little, little that he is picking on, it, it, it means that we did not reach the perfection. Like in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 1, he was saying, As dead flies cause even a bottle of sweet-smelling ointment to stink, you know, a bottle of sweet-smelling ointment. When you find dead flies in it, it, it it's no longer sweet-smelling. It, it's stinking. Okay? And so we have done everything morning to evening. We haven't even rested. But there is something that he is complaining about. It means that what we have done did not reach where God wanted us to reach. And so the complaint is coming for our perfection, for our holiness. And God expects that we take the complaint and work on it. So today my husband is saying the food was too salty. What do I do? It means that to, um, tomorrow when I am cooking, I should make sure that I pay attention to the salt that I'm putting, I'm putting there. I heard a woman that said, when the food is very delicious, my husband would never say this is delicious. But it's when that is not delicious that he, he will complain. Why is delicious? He's not complaining. He's not complaining. Take it as compliment. When there is no complaint, that is a compliment because you have simply done your duty so you don't need appreciation. You don't need thank you. When we go to work, we are not looking for our bosses to thank us. If the thank you comes, yeah, thank God. But if it doesn't come, you are rather happy that today I went to work and thank God there was no complaint about me. That is what we are looking for. So in our home... God is saying 
that we should not look for appreciation, but rather we should avoid complain. And when the complaint comes, we should see it as something that has come to perfect us. The complaint is there to perfect us. God is using our husband to, to, to chasten us or to rebuke us. Listen, my ladies, if someone sees something that he doesn't like, it's up to the person to use a soft tone or a harsh tone. So whatever way the complaint came about, whether your husband was harsh or whether he was soft, we are supposed to take it. And this message is really for me. In the past, I, my husband would complain and I would take it as nothing. He just put it behind me. And so that same thing that he complained, he would keep complaining because I did not take it to heart. And so I will keep on doing it. But God does not want me to continue doing that. The Bible says, little foxes spoil the vine. So this thing that I was joking with, or we joke about that, what is he even complaining about? He's just fishing for, for faults. Because he has complained, and because he is the head of the family, like a representative of Jesus, God will take his complaint seriously and look at us to see if we are going to regard it. The Bible says that for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Because he loves us, he's using our husband to, to correct us. He wants us to perfect holiness. And the Bible says that if you are not being corrected, if the things that you are doing wrongly, if God is not correcting you, then you are not his child. But because he loves you, because you are his daughter, he's using the husband to, to, to correct you so that you can be holy, so that you can, you can get to heaven, then we have to appreciate the correction that God is giving to us and work on it. God is also saying that we should avoid offenses. We should follow peace with all men. Our husband is in the home with us and God wants us to make sure that we are not offending him. Don't offend him. And so the things that is offending him, he's bringing it out by complaining. We should make sure that we are pleasing him, that we are following peace with him. The Bible says that follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So we should not take things lightly and say, why is he complaining about um, um, a cup, cup that, that was not washed well? He's not looking at all that I have been doing and it's just the small cup, the small stain there that is, he's complaining about. He is complaining about it because it's not acceptable to God. May the Lord God help us. May God help us. My sisters, when I read Hebrews chapter 12, if you have the time, read it from verse 1 up to 29. I was asking God for mercy. Hey, we should not play with our Christian life at all. We should not play with this Christian life because God is concerned about everything Thin, and everything we are going to give an account to God, especially how we live in the home with our husband. If the husband is complaining about something, we should see it as God complaining, God saying something to us. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 25 says, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. God from heaven is using our husband to talk to us. It might be something small, but God is unacceptable.
That is the reason God is using our husband to complain, to tell us, to correct it. We are expected to obey. Let's read on. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signified the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. All our fault, all the little foxes, they are going to be shaken. And if we are still holding on to it, then we'll be shaken out. God says there is going to be a shaking. There is a time that he's going to save, save us, the people. If any fault is found in us, we will not be accepted by him. The Bible says that Jesus Christ washes us with water. He washes the, the, the church with water so that there should be no blemish or any such thing. So anything in our lives that he has inspired our husband to bring out is Jesus who is washing us with the word that I have that complaint. Jesus is washing us with that complaint. He wants us to be clean. And so we are not supposed to still hold on to it because these things are sinful before God. It might not be sin. Like, you know, sometimes we think that telling lies and um, adultery and those things, we are not doing those things anymore. God has saved us. But the things in our lives, dirty habits, um, lazy habits, you know, things that are not good, habits that are not good, that are not acceptable to the husband. It's not acceptable to Christ. And so he is washing us by bringing it out to us. And we are supposed to let them go. Otherwise, God is going to shake us with those things. We cannot enter into his kingdom. See this one. And this word yet once more signify. The removing of those things that are shaking, the sins, the things that are unholy, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Oh Lord, have mercy on us. May God bless you all, ladies. May we perfect holiness. We should not look for praise from our husband when we are doing our job, our role, and we should take correction. If he's complaining about something, we should take notice of that complaint. In the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you all. In Jesus' name, amen.